Welcome to another video guys. Today we are comparing three cars that have been requested over and over on the channel. The Honda S2000, the Mazda RX-8, and the BMW E36 M3. All three cars today are modified to a very high level to improve the driving pleasure and performance on street and track. Obviously, I'm no stranger to S2000s, but today we're in a very special S2000. This is a 2002 AP1 owned by my friend Alex. The mod list on this S2000 is huge, and I will include it in the video description, but just to give you guys some of the main points. Although it is an AP1 with an AP1 engine, it has an AP2 transmission swapped in with the shorter gear ratios. It also has a Comtech engineering cold air intake, a Remark by Zero Auto Factory single exit catback exhaust. For suspension, we have the JRZ RS Pro two-way coilovers, 16K front, 14K rear spring rate. For brakes, we got AP Racing 5000R big brake kit with just street pads on it currently. Beautiful Vogue TE37 Saga, 17 by 10 plus 47 all around, wrapped in Kumo Xta V730 tires. And that's going to be the main mods on the car, but as I said, refer to that video description for the full list. With that out of the way, let's uh, once again revisit the Honda S2000, this time with the AP1 9000 RPM motor. Two liter, naturally aspirated, VTEC kicks in at 6000, revs to 9000, stock tune on this engine. <laughs> Gotta love that 9,000 red line. That is just so intoxicating. Perfect throttle response with an AP1 flywheel. And then paired with this AP2 transmission, this engine is always in its power band. What a fantastic driving experience. Front mid engine, rear wheel drive. That red line is just so insane. Even compared to the AP2, the AP1 just brings it up another notch in rawness and excitement. Best gearbox in the world. Honda S2000, baby. And look at that. 16K front, 14K rear spring rates. And the car handles bumps like a champ. JRZ RS Pro two ways with proper compression and rebound settings. Now whatever Alex has done to tune the suspension has made it feel so good in the canyons. Even with these high spring rates, the car just soaks up bumps and gives me so much control. That's just incredible. Just incredible. This car makes only around 240 brake horsepower and weighs in a little over 2,700 pounds with these bucket seats. And while it could use another 20 to 30 horsepower, I'm pretty happy with the stock power to weight. It's just right to have fun. Any less horsepower and I'd be a little disappointed, but this is just right. I keep finding myself short shifting 500 to 1,000 RPM below the red line. 
<laughs> this is so damn fun. I can say for a fact that the AP1 engine with the AP2 transmission is the more exciting powertrain and drivetrain combo for this car. Higher redline with shorter gear ratios. I mean, what's not to love? <laughs> so damn good. That being said, there are a few flaws to the S2000. As you can probably hear, the level of road noise in the cabin is immensely high, especially with this hard top. Squeaks and rattles at all the contact points is such a common issue. You can definitely feel the chassis flex over bumps and through the corners just a bit because it is, after all, a convertible. And while this AP1 steering rack does have a nice and quick ratio, it is a bit lacking in feel. After all, it is an electric power steering rack and not one of the best, if I'm being honest. Once you get used to it, it's not really a big issue. You can still place the car very precisely. The way this car handles the bumps. So impressive, so impressive. Great job to Alex for the setup of this car. It's lively while still being planted. It's just the right balance. It's not a full on grit machine that you can't really play with on a canyon road. You can dance with this car and that's what I love about it. So good. So, so good. I have a feeling that the S2000 in this group of three cars we have is going to end up being the most fun, most raw, most exciting, and the hardest to live with on a daily basis. But that being said, I have not driven an RX-8 or an E36 M3 in like six or seven years. So it'll be very interesting to revisit two of everyone's favorite front engine rear wheel drive naturally aspirated driver's cars. Hey everyone, Zygreen merch is now live. If you like my content and want to support the channel, consider buying one of my t-shirts. There are two designs to choose from and I'm selling them at cost for a limited time. Head over to the links in the video description for more details. All right, now we are in a 2004 Mazda RX-8 GT. It's been so long since I've driven one of these cars and the last few times I drove an RX-8, I really enjoyed the car. On paper, it's not a particularly exciting machine. It weighs close to 3,000 pounds. It's got a little 1.3 liter rotary engine, putting out not much over 200 horsepower. But what the specs don't tell you is that the balance of this car is really nice it makes it really easy to drive hard, a lot easier to drive hard, in fact, than the S2000. So Peter, the owner of this car, has done obviously a huge extensive list of mods. This is his daily and track car. So I'll put all of the mods in the video description as usual, but some of the main items here, racing beat air intake, HKS high power single exit exhaust. This revs normally to around 9,000 RPM, but with the tune it revs to 9,500. I'll take it out there for you guys at least once. It also has an OS Geekin 1.5 way LSD with a 4.77 final drive, Bilstein PSS coilovers, so nowhere near the level of sophistication as the JRZs. The exterior of this car for me is spot on. It really reminds me of the JDM Time Attack cars. Most of the exterior parts are from Leg Motorsport. And then for wheels, we've got the Wedsport TC105X, 18 by nine and a half, plus 25 on Hankook R Sport tires, 265 all around. So other than the suspension, I would say this car, the way it's modded is very close to the S2000. So with that being said, DSC off. Let's see how this RX-8 compares to my all time favorite rear wheel drive 
driver's car, the Honda S2000. <laughs> Such good throttle response. That's the first thing I'm noticing. The immediate response when I touch that throttle pedal. Love the high red line. Revs out it's in a way similar to the S2000, but in a straight line, it is a bit slower. The car is a couple hundred pounds heavier, and the engine, while it was rated at 230 brake horsepower new, this car with almost 100,000 miles, Peter said the dyno number is probably closer to 170 to 180 at the wheels. Steering feel, very light, but better feedback than the S2000 EPS rack. Shifter is excellent, not quite as good as the S2000s, but it's very direct, it's very mechanical, very satisfying to use. It's a much more refined experience in here, as I'm sure you guys can tell, a lot less road noise transmitted into the cabin, a lot less squeaks and rattles in the interior, and a lot more space. It just feels way more airy than that cramped S2K. How does it sound being driven flat out? Let's test that. <laughs> There is your 9,500 RPMs. Yes, this car is slower in a straight line than the S2000, unfortunately, but it makes an excellent sound. It has excellent throttle response, on par with the S2000, and it's an overall easier car to drive quickly in the corners. It's more forgiving. PSS coilovers, not exactly the gold standard, but hey, doing a good job out here. Very impressive. Got a little bit of rub there at the back. Peter said he's still trying to sort that out, but very impressed with the way this car drives so far, guys. I think with a better set of coilovers and properly tuned compression and rebound this thing could be really really capable puts the power down granted this engine's low on torque similar to the s2000 maybe even less torque than the s2000 so coming out of corners unless you're high in the rev range you're not going to have a whole lot of push you in the back of your seat acceleration so if i had to sum this car up i would say much easier to drive quickly than the S2000, but it is a little bit number in the way it responds to inputs. The front end isn't as sharp, that's for sure. But driving at seven to eight tenths on a canyon road, the main points here, they're really, really nice. There's a lot to like. Excellent shifter feel. Steering, superior to the S2000. It's lighter, but it has more feedback. Brakes are not amazing i think peter could do with a better pad compound absolutely love the engine love the characteristic it makes such a great sound the spinning dorito but i just wish it made an extra 30 horsepower and 20 or 30 foot pounds of torque that would really bring the power to weight ratio up to where it needs to be in my opinion super fun car to drive in the corners just so confidence inspiring <laughs> yes the Mazda RX-8 just as good as I remember it being in fact the owner of that yellow S2000 Alex he used to have two Mazda RX-8s he told me the other day that he wants to get another one someday Ha, 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 ha. 
9,500 RPM, guys. That is just addicting. It's so addicting. To me, the perfect RX-8 would be 100, 150 pounds lighter than this one. Some weight savings would go a long way. I don't know how easy it is to tune these engines for another 20 wheel horsepower, but if it's possible, that would be great. With that being said, it's time to hop into the E36 M3, another car I haven't driven in a very long time. All right, guys, last but not least, this is a 1998 BMW E36 M3 sedan owned by my friend Eric, who, by the way, also owns a Honda S2000. This car is streetable, but it is primarily a track car. Since this is the facelifted model, it does have the S52 3.2 liter inline six, which made around 240 horsepower brand new, but Eric has put in JE forged pistons, Schrick cams, King Race XP bearings, and a host of other parts to bring this car's wheel horsepower rating up to around 260 wheel horsepower. So it is easily going to be the quickest car in a straight line out of the three we have here today. This car without a driver weighed in at just over 3,000 pounds. So it's not a whole lot heavier than the RX-8, which sits in at 29, 2950. For suspension, we have the JRC three-way coilovers, 750 pounds in the front, 900 in the rear. It also has a 3.73 two-way Drexler limited slip differential. So let's see how this full-on track car drives compared to the S2000 and Mazda RX-8. Right away, this car is stiff, even stiffer than the S2000 and a lot stiffer than the RX-8. <laughs> wow, that torque, so much more torque than either of the other two cars. Woo, immediate turn in, wow. Surprisingly sharp front end for a 3,000 pound car. Plenty of power on the straightaways. Excellent throttle response. <laughs> Car tram lines a bit over the bumps here. It's a little bit challenging to keep in a straight line, but the grip level can't be argued with so much feel through this hydraulic steering rack far superior to the S2000 EPS and even better than the Mazda RX-8's EPS. Just goes to show that hydraulic steering is just better in terms of steering feel compared to electric power steering. It's also got this aftermarket shifter, similar to the old CAE shifter I had in my 911, and it feels so good, it's so mechanical. Dare I say it, it's on par with the S2000 shifter. All right, let's see about this straight line performance here. As the transmission's making all sorts of race car sounds. Pretty quick car definitely feels like 260 wheel horsepower. This suspension really stiffly sprung. I feel everything on the road. All the little bumps and imperfections get transmitted through the chassis. But the dampening is so, so good. Now Eric really knows what he's doing when it comes to tuning these JRZ coilovers. He's got the settings down for this thing. Holy crap. <laughs> this car just eggs me on to drive harder, attack corners. Everything is just so immediate. Feels full on race car, man. And a little bit of rotation there. 
so good. It's so controllable. BMW M3s have always been known for being tail happy, but in a very predictable, controllable way. And this E36 is no exception. The longer wheelbase really helps with this car and the fact that it has torque. So even if you're a little bit lower in that rev range, you can still steer the car with the throttle. Whereas S2000, you gotta keep the revs high. RX8, you gotta keep them even higher. Wow, this car is really damn good. This car just feels so competent, even on a bumpy canyon road. That's the surprising part to me. The way the car is set up, I thought it would be quite a handful in the canyon since it is set up for a smooth racetrack. I gotta say, JRZ suspension combined with Eric's tuning makes all the difference in the world. You can get away with relatively high spring rates and still have the car feel super well composed. Now, I'm not saying this feels like a luxury car out here over the bumps. It is still a pretty busy ride, but the difference is when you push this car hard, it doesn't fall apart. It doesn't get overly upset by the bumps despite its super high spring rates. So with that being said, how do I compare the S2000, the RX-8, and the E36 overall? I think engine-wise, the RX-8 probably loses out here, not because of sound characteristic. In fact, I would argue it might sound the coolest out of all three. The horsepower is just a little bit underwhelming, if I'm being totally honest. With another 20 wheel horsepower, I think that car would really come alive. S2000 engine and E36 M3 engine are both excellent, but the S2000 still wins my heart. Because of that high revving nature, E36 is more of a torquey, flexible motor. And let me demonstrate that for you guys one more time. Starting at low RPM, you'll see what I mean about the low end torque of this engine. Look at that. Just revs up immediately. really impressive. Who said you needed an S54 swap in your E36? Now granted that's exactly what Eric will be doing very soon but this engine with a few mods still a really really well suited engine to this chassis. Now speaking of chassis all three of these cars have top-notch chassis. I mean E36 M3 is all about the fact that it's easy to drive you can hold big angles with its long wheelbase and plenty of torque RX-8, kind of the same deal, longer wheelbase, very easy to drive at the limit, but the engine, again, is what holds it back because it doesn't give you that power that you need to steer it with the throttle on anywhere other than a racetrack or a super empty road. S2000 is a lot trickier to drive at the limit, but that's also what makes it so damn enjoyable. It's a challenge to drive hard. So with that being said, guys, if I had to pick one of these cars, I honestly don't know which one I would choose. They're all such great driver's cars. If you have any other thoughts about cars that compete in this segment, please let me know and I'll try to find some examples to review for you guys in the future. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.